Creekside Park is a lovely small park in central Fort Collins. Commuters regularly pass over the quiet stream that runs its length. Children play along its banks and romp among its shady trees. On a spot in the center of the park stands a statue. It commemorates those who lost their lives in the worst flood in Fort Collins history and those who came to help. In 1997, this park was epicenter for a disaster few thought possible. On July 27th of that year, a summer storm moved into Fort Collins and it began to rain. And rain, and rain. The storm's duration and intensity were more than anyone could have anticipated. By Monday night, July 28th, an entire year's worth of precipitation had fallen on the city. 14 and a half inches of rain in little over a day. With the ground saturated to its limit, Spring Creek rose steadily, quickly overtopping its banks. A mobile home park once stood only a few hundred yards from this spot. Home to more than 200 people, the park's location would prove disastrous. Emergency workers responded, and through the heroic efforts of all involved, many were saved that night. Regrettably, five people lost their lives. The flood of 97 really changed the history of Fort Collins and the history of the stormwater utility. That was a very large event. It was greater than a 500-year event. Um, people really became aware that Fort Collins is prone to flooding and that these kind of large events can happen right here. We didn't have a series of gauges for rainfall or stream flow that told us how much water was actually out there that night. The flood warning system for Collins is the densest network of gauges in a city setting in the U.S. The flood warning system allows us to monitor events in real time and to set up alarms so that we can react before we reach the kind of flood situation that would cause damage to life and property. And these gauges now are able to tell us uh, how much rainfall is actually occurring, what the water is, is doing building up behind railroad embankments, behind road embankments in our detention ponds so that we have a better idea of actually how much water is out there right now. We've also got more advanced weather monitoring systems so that we can evaluate incoming weather before basically it hits Fort Collins. That information comes in directly here to the Flood Warning Center. We keep an on-call staff, that is a group of people who are ready to respond 24 hours a day to these conditions. The person who is on call receives uh, information from the National Weather Service, what storm patterns are developing. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting alarms here all over Old Town, mm -hmm. high intensity. Yep. They can look at weather information, radar images. They can also look at the actual rain gauge and, and stream flow information for town. What's been going on the previous few days and trying to appreciate what may occur over time. The storm might grow to the point where we activate the Departmental Emergency Operations Center. We have the public information officer come in in case we have to do any public identifications. We have the Poudre Fire Authority come in, who are basically our emergency managers in the area. The Parks and Rec Department, it could be streets, it could be police, or any kind of other emergency management personnel that might be needed to deal with flooding conditions. On August 2nd, 2007, we had a pretty large storm here in town. It basically moved from the southwest across the northeast uh, in town and created a greater than 100-year event in terms of the rainfall intensity. We recorded all the data from that, and what I did is basically modify that data in order to create a simulated storm. We actually practice running through and managing a flood situation for Collins. You can hear it pounding out here. We've got extremely intense rainfall coming down here. We the last update indicated Laporte was also getting some pretty heavy rainfall. And the stream conditions are basically the ditches are the biggest problem right now in terms of dumping. We've got four alarms set up at Lincoln Avenue on the Pooter. So we've only hit the bottom two alarms. During a storm, it's important for us to communicate with the on-call field crews who can move around and basically deal with any kind of local flooding conditions, do anything from 
unclogging culverts to closing intersections, possibly sandbagging to contain water. There is a flow into City Park Lake, and we're also having some flow out of the ditches about a thousand feet upstream of LaPorte Avenue. Those ditches, the discharge is still climbing, so it's quite a concern. I think there might be a lot of overland flow getting into the ditches. Uh, Roland Moore Park, Jerry indicated he was dumping water into Spring Creek from both the Larimer Number 2 and the Mercer ditches. Oftentimes we'll have to manage that flow actively by closing or opening gates and trying to divert water from those ditches into some natural drainages we have. We also can get the information we're getting from the field and communicate that to the public. Marcia, do we have somebody who can look at uh, critical facilities in the uh, Old Town and um, an application area to see if we need to do any individual notifications. Critical facilities are those that are, are really the facilities that are at higher risk. They can be things like schools, hospitals, daycares, nursing homes, facilities that have hazardous materials, and we actually don't allow new critical facilities to be in the floodplain. The ones that are circled are all of the ones that are in the designated area. One of the first things that you can do is know your risk. Just know where your house is located, where your business is located. Is it in a floodplain? Are there local drainage issues? Those sorts of things. You can call our office and we can do a floodplain determination for you and look at both the city floodplains as well as the FEMA floodplains relative to your house. The other way is on our website. You can look up by street address, parcel number, intersection, but remember that just because you're completely outside the floodplain doesn't mean that you're completely free of flooding. Anyone in Fort Collins can purchase flood insurance, whether you're in the floodplain or not. If you're outside the FEMA map floodplain, you're able to purchase it at a much less expensive rate. The annex, they West don't, they don't use Lower that County Mental Health could be a top priority. Yeah. What do you think we should do as far as notification of those people? You want to make individual calls or? Um, we've got the floodplain for that one. I'd suggest maybe trying the auto dialer system. We know that the warning is present until 3 o'clock this afternoon. There are multiple ways that we would notify someone if there is a risk of a flood or other weather-related emergency. The best way for people to get information is to tune into their local news stations. When the emergency alert system is activated, it will scroll across the screen or play on the radio a message about the current weather situation. We have a new automated phone system where we can send recorded messages directly to people's homes not only to call home phones, but to reach people via cell phone or through text messaging, email, as long as people have provided that information to us in advance. The Office of Emergency Management uses a number of communication systems to notify the public in an emergency. No one system can contact everyone. I've advised her that if it's in a medical emergency to call 911 rather than us. Advise them to stay off flooded streets to protect their valuables, get everyone out of the basement, but that we cannot actually respond to a flooding of a building at this point. We do not have pumps. The Republic always needs to remember that they're responsible for taking care of their own safety and their own property. Think of the things you're going to need for your family. Make sure that they have some type of an emergency preparedness kit. Do you have flashlights? Do you have candles? A little food, some water, a radio. National Weather Service Doppler radar indicated a severe thunderstorm capable of producing pain. Your weather radios are available throughout the community. They're very inexpensive and they are an all-hazard weather radio. So not only do you get notified of warnings for the floods, tornadoes, but also for snowstorms and also for hazardous material spills. Have a plan so everyone knows where you're going to be going so you can meet up again and make sure that everybody in your family are all okay. Although we put a lot of emphasis on severe weather, the notification, your go kits, your emergency evacuation routes, all this information can be used no matter what the incident happens to be. So we're at the high limit. It looks like, okay, it's going through the bike tunnel now. So Mark, the bike tunnel is basically receiving water. The bike path along the Poudre River, a lot of those paths are going to be covered with water. And it's perfectly normal. We'll close those. Those are actually designed to spill waste help convey water so that we can transmit it efficiently downstream. We've got, we've got problems that are extending out east now, though, it looks like, because the rainfall looks like it's increasing a little bit along Mulberry to the east. So they're still getting so it's, it's it's sounds like storms in. moving east. If those storms stall, or if there's very little movement to begin with, we can get all of that water falling in one spot for the entire length of the storm 
and create severe flood problems in town. I have contacted streets to dispatch some sandbags to Constitution and Springfield because presently it's over, the ditch is overtopping to the west and I also have an arrow board out blocking traffic at Prospect and Taft where we normally inundate those couple lanes of traffic. Um, apparently there's a resident on Fine west of Shields. They're noting that there's water running across the road right now uh, moving east and it's about a foot deep. Apparently vehicles are moving through it. Please do not drive through any area that looks like it has standing water. You can actually hydroplane a car in less than two inches of standing water. You can float a car in about six inches of water. You are only asking for trouble. So it's, it's doing pretty well. I think we're, I think we're okay on that. This Mulberry Lamb Number 2, it's dropping quite a bit here now. And virtually all the ditches and streams uh, west of college are starting to decrease and drop below basically spillage levels. It looks like we've made it through the worst part of the rainfall. All our detention ponds, all our facilities are pretty full right now. If we get another storm this afternoon or tonight or something, we could be real quick back in the thick of things, So, but good news for now. The Fort Collins Stormwater Utility and the Poudre Fire Authority have taken many steps to try and limit the impact of flooding in our community, including providing the public with up-to-date emergency information. But you have to understand the risk and take steps to prepare yourself as flooding will strike again. Remember, the first step to being prepared is to be aware.